is rooted in our diversity, our history and culture, which has always been enriched by our immigrant communities and family members. At the same time, the laws that govern our nation's immigration system, they're antiquated, they're ineffective. Many of you know that from different perspectives, but you know it's broken. Fixing that broken system is an urgent priority. And I'm encouraged to see Congress making progress, bipartisan progress, finding common ground on this critical issue that has gone um, without progress for far too long. We need a solution that includes a visa system that meets the needs of our economy, a tough but fair path to citizenship for the estimated 11 million individuals in our country who are undocumented today, and a plan that ensures security at our nation's borders. Current U.S. policy on undocumented, on undocumented immigration suffers from a major structural flaw. There's a mismatch between our economic realities and our nation's outdated policies. The legacy of this legislation has meant that U.S. policy is out of step with economic realities that propel both immigration and prompt employers to hire undocumented immigrants. A more rational, legal immigration system will promote job creation by converting that current flow of illegal immigration into the United States into a more manageable, controlled, and legal process. We must ensure that our laws enable our companies to retain the high-skilled foreign graduates of our universities in science, technology, engineering, and math in order to harness their skills creativity and entrepreneurial spirit and create jobs here rather than sending them home with an American education to create those jobs overseas. Immigration reform must also be fair to American and New Mexican workers and taxpayers. Congress must ensure that any reforms to our visa programs don't displace American workers, don't undercut U.S. wages, or exploit migrant workers. Both employers and workers will benefit from an effective electronic verification system that prevents employers from hiring people illegally, as well as a visa system that protects the sustainability of the American agricultural industry. A commitment to reform our country's immigration system also requires a commitment to our students. And I'm very glad to see that the recent bipartisan Senate proposal acknowledges that students should be treated especially with great focus. And as the lead proponent of the DREAM Act myself, I am very hopeful that it will be incorporated into final legislation. By passing the DREAM Act, thousands of students across the country will gain more education and training, which translates into better and higher paying jobs. And all of these extra wages will circulate through our economy spurring economic growth and new job creation. I've met many of these dreamers. They are bright, they are hardworking, and most of them don't know how to be anything but an American. Dreamers represent what's best about our nation. Hard work, motivation, and a willingness to serve this country, whether it be in uniform or as a doctor or as an engineer. It's time to make the DREAM Act a reality. Finally, those of us who've lived in or worked in and represented border communities have long been aware of the vast array of complex and difficult issues facing these regions. We've made great advances in border security in recent years. Illegal border crossing apprehensions are at historically low levels. They've fallen from by nearly 90% since their peak in 2005 in New Mexico alone. We have more agents, better technology, and better infrastructure devoted to our borders than ever before. Our challenge moving forward is to continue to ensure our nation's safety while balancing the need of our border communities to thrive economically and to benefit from their unique binational culture and economy. I am proud to be supporting the initiative to extend the border commercial zone. This initiative was spearheaded by Senator Jeff Bingaman at the federal level and it received bipartisan unanimous support from this body. It would allow Mexicans who have been screened, security screened by the Department of Homeland Security to travel the I-10 corridor in New Mexico, to shop, 
to conduct business, to visit family, as a way to bolster economic activity in that region. Increasing the number of visitors traveling to New Mexico will help the U.S. businesses, our local economies, and will bring in more tax revenue. According to a March 2012 assessment conducted at New Mexico State, it estimated that the rule change, that this one federal rule change, could increase sales by up to $51 million a year here in New Mexico, create up to 343 new jobs, and increase annual tax revenue by as much as $2.57 million. I'm pleased to report that this initiative is on track. And I am very hopeful that the new rule will be implemented as early as this summer. With bipartisan support building in both houses of Congress and a president who is eager to solve the immigration problem, there is no reason we should not be able to get this done in the coming months. New Mexicans are eager for a solution. Dream Act students deserve it, and our economy requires it. And with this in mind, I am going to work to ensure that we achieve immigration reform that works for the state of New Mexico. New Mexico. It's also imperative that we achieve a balanced alternative to the devastating automatic spending cuts set to take effect next month, what some people call, in Washington speak, sequestration. Cuts to both the military and to the initiatives that strengthen our middle class, like education. We don't have to choose between protecting our nation's security and strengthening the middle class. We don't have to choose between being fiscally responsible and educating our children. We must reduce our deficit, but we should